As we get started, the first thing I'd like to do is just get a sense of who we all have here today. How many of you would consider yourselves to be storytellers? So, almost everybody. How many of you have used WordPress to tell a story? Um, probably a good 50%. Great. Uh, we're going to talk about both of those uh, today. Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, my slides are already up. So, uh, in the spirit of, of open source, uh, follow the short link there and feel free to. And those are posted out on SlideShare. That's where that link goes to. So no dangerous uh, sites that you're being led to by putting in that URL. As I mentioned, I'm Kevin Barnes. Um, I like to call myself an author, uh, but uh, in the interest of being completely straightforward, I've had two short stories published, and there were about 35 years between the two. So. <laughs> Um, I, I also serve as the webmaster for a storytelling organization down in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, what they are is they're an organization that, uh, um, very similar to the Moth and organizations like that, they do story slams where people come together once a month and actually uh, tell short stories um, verbally in front of an audience. I also write um, what I call grassroots or args or alternate reality games. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, the quick, quick definition is uh, an alternate reality game is a game where you find different clues or pieces of a narrative across a whole variety of media. Uh, so you'll find, for example, a website for a fictional company that has something to do with the story. Uh, you might actually find a clue somewhere in an actual physical location. Uh, you might see a video posted somewhere. It all ties together to help you either solve a mystery or pursue a, a, a progress through a story or something along those lines. Uh, and finally, and this is my real job, I guess, um, development at Orion Group, which is a small digital marketing agency in Wisconsin. Uh, in terms of my background, uh, I built my first website way back at the beginning of the internet uh, and actually got into WordPress pretty early as well. Um, Remember those days when Kubrick was essentially the one and only theme that existed for WordPress? Uh, and I've been doing web development pretty much professionally full time uh, for about a decade now. So, what I'd like to cover today is uh, give you a little bit of background just on in general. We're going to try and cover, quite honestly, about three or four thousand years in maybe five minutes. Uh, then we're going to jump into uh, online storytelling, and eventually, uh, after we've covered that, we'll talk about a couple of very specific tools that you can use to tell stories through WordPress. One of those is a plugin called the ASAP Story Engine. We'll spend a bit of time on that. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, we'll also talk about some other uh, themes that are out there that are specific to WordPress, which can really enhance the online storytelling experience. Uh, finally, at the end, we'll do a Q&A. And I've included at the end of this, this is another reason to go ahead and take a look or download them from SlideShare. There are about 10 pages of additional resources, uh, essentially a long laundry list of links in terms of information about good ways to tell stories online, uh, where to find other WordPress related tools that can assist you with some of the things that we you know, will just briefly uh, during today's presentation and the like. So starting out with a brief history of storytelling. Um, I'm assuming most, if not all of you, know who Joss Whedon is. He's the man behind TV series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Firefly, uh, one of the creative forces in the last couple of Avengers movies. Uh, at Comic-Con down in San Diego this summer, uh, he made a very inter or gave a very interesting quote where he essentially said, the main function of the human brain, its primary instinct, is storytelling. I like to define storytelling in a fairly general uh, fashion. The way that I look at storytelling, in particular for this presentation, it covers both fiction and nonfiction. Uh, so from a nonfiction standpoint, things like long, uh, long form journalism, uh, articles that might be 30, 40, 50,000 words and give you a very in-depth view on a topic. Uh, so we're going to kind of touch on storytelling that 
could cover a whole variety of things. We're not going to get into the specifics of things like using storytelling as a brand building tool or to help communicate your company's uh, messages and uh, as a marketing tool, but that fits into this in, in a degree as well. So let's do a quick tour of storytelling. Um, verbal storytelling has been around since before recorded history began. Uh, folks would gather around the campfire uh, and tell stories of the hunt, you know, essentially their success in those days with uh, grocery shopping. Uh, <laughs> there, there are accounts of um, cave paintings that uh, date back about 15,000 years. Um, so that is, I guess, kind of the first actual stories that we can look at today and say those are stories that we know existed at this point in time. Uh, the first written epic was Giglamesh, which was, I believe, 700 BC. Uh, so that is the point then where in history we actually start to have written stories that we can look back to. Uh, Aesop's fables were written in about 200 BC. Uh, the name Aesop, of course, is where they get the name for the Aesop story engine for WordPress, which we'll talk about. Uh, about the same time, oral um, histories were being passed from generation to generation, and there were stories that had been told for thousands of years that were starting to finally be written down as well. Uh, when we get into some of the more recent times, uh, the, first, uh, the first novels emerged. Uh, Shakespeare, of course, uh, became one of the, the primary and, you know, in terms of our history thus far, probably the most well-known author. Um, for his storytelling skills and efforts. Then in more modern times, um, storytelling has started to get as different medium came about. Uh, so when we had things like motion pictures arise, suddenly that became a new media and the storytelling, um, the way that stories were told, adjusted so that you could tell a story in that form. Uh, radio added to that, television added to that further. Now we're at the point where we have the World Wide Web, uh, all sorts of digital, uh, digital methods that can be applied to a story. Uh, and as a result, what was traditional storytelling for thousands and thousands of years has really kind of exploded in a whole variety of directions. Quite honestly, and uh, I, I'd be curious actually to see if this statement, I think we haven't even touched the surface of where storytelling is going to go. Uh, do any of you have a, I guess, a sense of, you know, do you think we found the end? Are we near the end? Are we nowhere near the end? Nowhere near the end. Okay. Internet. Uh, this is a great example from the early, early days. Um, Lufthansa uh, had one of the very early text and graphic websites. This is mid-1990s. Uh, where they were attempting to sell their services by telling stories about people's wonderful vacations. You look at this today and you kind of go, oh my God, but you know, this is in its day. Uh, <laughs> you, you move about uh, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years into the future, uh, we get things that are uh, much more graphically and visually appealing, much more interactive. Uh, there was limited or no interactivity with those, those early online attempts to sell to tell stories. Uh, this is just uh, one of many, many, many infographics uh, that you'll find out on the internet. The idea being that it's a way to introduce a story by giving you uh, points of information and starting to lead you through a narrative about a particular topic. So what sorts of, what sorts of online stories are we seeing now? Uh, as I mentioned, you can see a lot of things that kind of just take the traditional storytelling and put them online. Um, a great example of this is the explosion in ebooks. I mean, those are stories that were written in book form. Uh, you read that on a Kindle or you read that as a PDF uh, that you have on a website, it's pretty much exactly the same as what you're getting in the book form. Uh, you're just using a different media to get to it. Um, infographics, as we just saw, is an, another tool that's out there. Um, I mentioned long form journalism a little bit earlier. Uh, Area that's really starting to grow. Uh, a lot of major journalistic outfits, you know, whether it's the New York Times or the Atlantic, uh, are telling stories and are writing these articles that are really much more comprehensive in terms of looking at a topic or an issue from many, many different angles. Uh, one of the things, and we'll have an 
example uh, of this shortly, is that it allows you to do things that you wouldn't necessarily have been able to do in a book or magazine before in terms of A, making it interactive, and B, really giving people a chance to understand, you know, whether it's through animation or timelines or whatever it might be, things that were much more difficult to convey when you were just dealing with static pictures and the written word. Uh, there's a lot of animation that's being used as well these days. Uh, you know, again, some of this right now is just what you would have seen previously in television or you know, in the movies being moved onto the web, but that's starting to grow beyond those boundaries as well. Uh, I mentioned alternate reality games before. Uh, the internet tends to play a key in most of those. Uh, and finally, transmedia storytelling is this idea where you have a story and you go someplace else to get additional dimensions to it, so almost like universe building. Uh, for example, you might have a novel, but the novel says, you know, find out more about the characters, go to this website. Or, um, you know, for a visual representation of what, you know, this particular city looked like at this point in time, go here. Uh, so, again, it's that idea with transmedia that you're actually able to expand the story by looking at different pieces of it in different media. So, in terms of a couple of examples of these, uh, one that uh, took place, I believe this is about two years old now, was uh, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. What this was, was an attempt to redo Pride and Prejudice as a real-time event that was happening online. So the group that did this, uh, the way that they went about it was they hired a number of actors. Uh, each of them represented one of the major characters. Uh, they updated the names and the basic narrative to be set in uh, present day. Uh, but other than that, followed the general structure, the narrative of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, the characters had their own Pinterest, uh, Twitter. Uh, Lizzie Bennett herself actually was um, somebody who was video blogging. Uh, so she would sit down once or twice a week and talk about her love life, what was going on in her career and all that stuff. Uh, had an incredible response. Uh, people really, really got into this when they discovered it and would go digging around on the web to try and find the other pieces of this. You know, well, if, if Lizzie's video blogging here, what are the other characters doing in other social media? You know, who's got websites that I can look to find out more? And on each of these examples, by the way, there's a link on the bottom that goes to an overview uh, that kind of will put the different pieces. So you don't have to necessarily go through all the effort of finding the, you know, 30, 40, 50 pieces that might be out there to follow the story. An example in terms of uh, long-form uh, journalism is an article that came out a couple of months ago, and I suspect for the developers, I see heads nodding, the developers in the crowd, you probably came across this, uh, called What is Code? Uh, this was a beautiful example of how you can handle a factual topic uh, online and really tell it in a way that's much more inter um, interactive and dynamic than anything you could ever hope to convey using just you know, the printed word and static. Uh, some of the really neat things that, uh, that were done with uh, what is code was there would be code examples and you would be invited to go in and actually change things to see how it would change what the end result of what displayed or what happened was. Uh, so it gave you a much more hands-on way to actually experience what the article was talking about. And I, I threw this one in here just because it's one of my personal favorites. Uh, the TV show, uh, How I Met Your Mother, from the US that ended, I guess, two years ago now, uh, did uh, a very good job of expanding their storyline well into the TV show and into lots and lots of other media. Uh, for example, when the character Barney, who was kind of the, the businessman, I guess, of the, the, group, of, uh, the group of folks, uh, wanted to post a resume, he did a video resume and it kind of had its way of, um, it was at an actual website that he created that you could go and, uh, and it, it was his way of saying, here's what I think is cool about video resumes and here's why everybody should do one. Uh, a lot of the major characters at one point or another were blogging. Uh, secondary characters were blogging. Uh, there were websites that were just referenced offhand once in the web series that you would go out and find. Uh, one of them, interesting because we're talking about this in Toronto, was something called CanadianSexActs.com, which is still there, by the way. Uh, if you're ever interested in seeing Alan Thick try to explain why sex in Canada is interesting, it's, you know, of course, it's all done family-friendly, tongue-in-cheek, but uh, a, a great example of how the 
drop things all over the place. And you'd really have to kind of search and uh, find these. Uh, another interesting thing that the show did was um, one of the characters, it was discovered, had a secret uh, that she had actually been a childhood pop star uh, by the name of Robin Sparkles. And uh, what they had done is before they got to that episode, they actually seeded the videos from a couple of her songs online so that people could discover them. And then, of course, once the episode was on, everybody was posting links to it and pushing people out to YouTube and the like. So with all of that said, the examples and the history and everything, what makes WordPress a good fit for telling stories? Um, well, as is the case with most things with WordPress, cost is a really, really big benefit. I mean, we're talking about you know, starting out essentially at the level of free and then going up from there. Uh, the support, again, is one of the really, really uh, strong points for WordPress. Uh, there's a community out there of people who are very devoted and are willing to help you, you know, do pretty much whatever you want to do in terms of being able to accomplish something with, with WordPress as your content management system. Uh, it's scalable. Uh, there are a lot of stories out there um, about companies that have different things with uh, storytelling. They've used WordPress because it's very easy to spin up 5, 10, 15 sites uh, in a relatively short period of time. Uh, something that wouldn't necessarily be that easy if you were using another platform. Of course, it's easy to use with uh, as many folks that have already worked in WordPress. You know, the odds are pretty good that when you bring somebody in to work on a website for storytelling that, you know, either through having done their own blog or having worked on another WordPress site, they're probably at least at some level already familiar with the tool. Uh, it's easy to maintain, of course, assuming that you're doing the things that you should be doing with WordPress. Uh, the adoption rates, WordPress just continues to become more and more popular, so it's not like something that you have to worry is going to be gone in six months. Uh, it's a very SEO-friendly platform. So again, in terms of storytelling, if you've got a story to tell, you can make sure that you're showing up in the search engines for the keywords that you want to and actually getting your audience to find you. It's customizable, and I, Given that we're at a WordCamp, I probably don't have to say anything else about that. Uh, and the other thing, and this is the one I think that a lot of people aren't that aware of, there are a number of tools in terms of plugins and themes that already exist to turn WordPress into a storytelling tool. So with that said, I want to start to look at a couple of those. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's ASAP Story Engine. Uh, this is a plugin that's been created specifically to enable storytelling through WordPress. It's been around, I guess, for about a year and a half now, so it's relatively um, But the things that it allows you to do are very, very powerful. Uh, the, other, uh, the other really strong points for it, uh, kind of right out of the box, is it has some very good support, uh, and it has some very good online documentation. And again, the links are in the slides uh, if you want to actually check it out for yourself itself is free. Uh, there are some add-ons that are, are premium that you would have to purchase, uh, but to just start out with the basic plugin and pretty much do most of the functionality which we're about to go through, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, there are 13 unique what are called story components, uh, and the way that these operate is when you're writing within WordPress, and I, I'm actually going to jump out to a site that I put together for a quick demo here. When you're writing a story within WordPress, uh, very similar to how you'd add an image and you'd go up and click Add Media, uh, you're going to have the option to add these different story components within your story. Uh, there's a great quick start guide that's been put together. Uh, one of the things, if you're not a developer, to be aware of is that the ASAP Story Engine doesn't work out of the box with most themes. You have to enable it within the theme. Uh, it does a lot, and if you have any sort of basic comfort level with code, you can probably do it yourself. Uh, if you don't, the good news is that there are themes out there that are already set up that have, it, uh, that have the code in them, uh, so that you can go ahead and use those themes and use the ASAP Story Engine within those uh, without having to actually go in and make any changes or tweak the code at all. There's a developer portal, so if you do want to get into uh, tweaking things a little bit more on the back end, um, in particular, there's a lot that you can do in terms of how the components are used and how they're displayed. Everything from uh, you know just 
basic styling to actually uh, looking at how the different components uh, can, can be utilized and where, uh, where the information that you're putting into a component uh, can be pulled to. Um, and finally, as I kind of hinted at, there are add-ons. Um, the same folks that make the ASAP Store engine have created, I think there are like six or seven themes right now, premium themes that they've created. Um, there are additional ones outside of the, the organization that created the plugin they are available as well. But uh, they have uh, premium themes that are set up. They're all pre-styled and everything, so you can kind of go through and find you know, the one that fits most looking for. And in, in the case of these premium themes, the Story Engine plugin is right in there already. You pretty much just set it up and run with it. Uh, they also have some additional add-ons that you can purchase that do things more along the lines of uh, providing templates for certain styles and things like that. At this point, I want to jump out quick and actually show you uh, an example. Uh, this is a WordPress site that I put together uh, about three or four months ago, specifically for the purpose of being able to demo this uh, at WordCamp. Uh, we had taken a short, well, three-day weekend uh, to Boston and had uh, walked the Freedom Trail, which is uh, essentially about a half-day walk that goes through uh, historical sites that are related to the American Revolution. Uh, had taken a ton of photography, some video, uh, and collected just a lot of information, and it seemed like this was a really good uh, topic that I could pull all these things together and show how you can create something using this uh, ASAP Story Engine plugin. So in the back end, you, know, you have what's essentially a traditional post in, in WordPress. Uh, so is up here next to the Add Media button, um, there's an Add Component button. Uh, and when you click on that, it jumps you out and you can select which of the components uh, you want to add. They, um, some of these are pretty straightforward. Um, the image component is not that different than a lot of things that you could do, uh, either just with basic um, WordPress uh, or with um, some, in, uh, some image plugins that have already been created for WordPress. But some of these other things are pretty unique. Uh, the character uh, component allows you to actually create, um, well, the way they define it is character bios. Could use this to capture any sort of character specific information uh, that can then come up on screen when someone is reading about a particular character. Uh, a couple of the others that are really, really interesting is um, timeline stop. And I've got an example of that in Freedom Trail here. So as I scroll down, you'll see that what happens is once I start to go through this, um, I created a timeline that actually shows which. Um, which of the different points we were at the Freedom Trail as you scroll down through the story. So on the bottom of the screen, it essentially um, is a timeline uh, that gets displayed. And as you scroll through uh, from one item to the next, you progress through the timeline. Uh, there's also a geographic version of this, um, the uh, map component. Uh, so instead of tying your story to a timeline and progressing through a timeline, you can actually have a geographic uh, um, map-based path uh, that you're showing. Operates very similar. You can, um, depending on how you style it, you can map the, um, you can anchor the map to either the bottom or side of the, the window. And as you progress through the story, you can actually see your progress in the story tracked out as you move from point to point. Uh, there are a couple of things uh, that, I don't think are really specific to storytelling that they've made components out of. Uh, one is the parallax, um, the parallax component, and I actually made pretty extensive use of that in here as well. Uh, so, for example, this is the State House of Boston parallax as you scroll past it. Um, the one thing that's nice about uh, the parallax and also the image components is uh, th this is, by the way, a custom theme that I just created for the demo uh, that's really pretty vanilla and just uh, was designed so that I could plug the ASAP Story Engine into it. But it has a very, it has a fixed width running down the center. What the components will let you do though, is you can actually set to go beyond the width of your content area and make things full screen, even if the theme itself doesn't normally uh, display content at full screen. Now in the, um, 
in the story itself, or in the, the post that you're creating with your story, the way that these components display is you see these boxes here. Uh, so very similar to what you might see anytime else that you're inserting, you know, whether it's media or something in, into a WordPress uh, post. Um, but it's really simple on the back end. It's just these short codes that get generated and pass a couple of parameters. Um, so for example, in the one that I've just highlighted here, this is the one that says, okay, for this point in the story, this was 9 a.m. in the morning and we were at the state house. Uh, so that's really all that's, um, all that's involved. Everything done with the code that's already in the plugin. I'm gonna actually, just because this is kind of a natural breaking point quick before I finish the demo, I wanted to ask if there were any questions specifically about the, the story engine or some of the things that you, know, that you can do here with it. Yes? So this, this map, you don't have a demo of how the map would look, right? I, I didn't create a map demo, no, so I'm sorry. Like there's a map on the side that's sticky and sticks on the right side, and if you scroll down, it traces the line that Patrick took or something like it, It's very similar to what the timeline does. So it's always anchored, you know, either to the side or the bottom. Um, and, you know, again, I haven't created one myself, but from what I've seen, it, it pretty much shows you that geographic progression. So if you were to cover 4,000 years of history, you need something a little longer, would it continually uh, refresh and move on as you scroll down? The, the question was, so if we wanted to cover something more like 4,000 years of history, um, would we need to have something longer or something that would refresh as you scroll down? Uh, the majority of that would actually, I think, probably be done most easily with styling. Uh, one of the things that I discovered when I created for my demo here was that I was quickly running out of, out of space, so I styled this to start creating um, multiple levels and to kind of you know, flip from the top to the bottom level there. Uh, you would probably need to do something similar or play around with the styles, I think, to, to create something that would be a little bit like that. As far as I know, um, unless you actually go in and start messing with uh, the, the code, um, the, the story engine itself anchors the timeline just to the bottom. Uh, I may not be correct on that, but I believe that is the case. But again, it's WordPress. Pretty much tweak things however you want to do it. Anything else before we move on? There are also a number of storytelling themes uh, that are out there for WordPress. Uh, I focused on just a couple of them here that I wanted to, to walk through quickly. This first one, which is called Long Form, is a free theme that out of the box is ready to work with um, the ASAP story engine. This is one of those examples of, um, of a theme that's already got the, um, the uh, plugin enablement or the, uh, the, uh, the plugin is, is already set up to work with the theme. Uh, the other nice things about, um, about long form is that there's an awful lot of information if you're a developer. So it's very easy to go in and tweak the theme and make changes as you'd like. Uh, if you're not a developer, there are a lot of advanced options built in as well. Uh, Storyteller is, um, is a little bit different. This is actually a theme that was originally designed for online journalists. It uses backstretch.js uh, and fitvids.js so that you're essentially always showing images and videos full screen. It, the idea being that you're creating a very visual story uh, when you use this theme. Uh, it's open source, it's free. Uh, it, it gives you the ability to very easily build uh, a multimedia story in essence. Radcliffe is a little bit more traditional in the sense that it really has been built to emphasize or play with uh, text and static images. Very similar to the, to the last theme, it does have the ability that you can do full screen images, full screen images uh, and the fonts are selected uh, with, uh, with readability being the primary focus. Uh, so this is more meant kind of as a traditional online article or online story. Uh, 
but again, it's, it's very good at what it does. The other nice thing about Radcliffe uh, is that they've tweaked the back end uh, quite a bit uh, in, in order for you to be able to control these uh, different elements, to control the, the text and the photos and how they're appearing. Uh, editor theme is, is a little bit more traditional in that its primary focus is images and, uh, and text. This is another one where the text choice or the font choices are uh, very specifically made to make it more readable online. Uh, this is a, a case where they've, um, they've essentially done theme, uh, theme options on the back. Uh, and what's interesting about, um, about Editor when you look at it is uh, it, it's been slimmed down to a large degree, so you're only looking at the things that you really need to be worrying about if you're telling a story online. I'd like to jump to questions and answers now. Uh, we've just kind of touched on a very few t uh, tools and topics, but there are a lot of things that are out there in addition to what I've talked about. Uh, we have a volunteer that's going to run the mic around to folks. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. Yes. Is there any facility for selling stories? Uh, there are, um, and to be quite honest, I'm not as familiar as I suspect a lot of other people are. Uh, there are ways that you can do it. I mean, there are WordPress sites, well, actually multi-sites that have been set up uh, where you can actually essentially put up a site uh, and uh, use that as a way to, to post and, and, shell, and sell stories. Uh, there are a lot of um, online, I guess I call magazines uh, that pay for folks uh, to write stories. Uh, so there's opportunities to, to sell writing in that fashion as well. Is that the sort of thing that you were thinking of? Yeah. Um, there are plugins uh, that are out there as well. And again, I, I know these exist. I haven't played with any of them specifically. They actually allow you to uh, set up WordPress uh, so that you can use it as a contribution system where people will you know, contribute stories and essentially if they, if you publish them, uh, you choose to publish them, they can get paid for them then. Other questions? Do you use this in the capacity of your working life or is this a hobby for you that you do at nighttime with all your extra time? <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually started as, yeah. it started as a hobby. <laughs> um, but uh, I've started using it, um, and as part of my job, I actually have a development team that I oversee. Um, and we've started using it to, um, to a small degree. Uh, I've actually also used it with the, uh, the storytelling organization website that I referenced, uh, that I serve as a webmaster for. Um, just because there are some things that you can do with these components, you know, even if it's not a full-blown storytelling website, the flexibility of being able to add timelines and to uh, you know, just on the fly put in video in parallax and things like that is, you know, is cool and to have it all in a, you know, in a single plugin as opposed to having to put in, you know, five, six, however many plugins to do that uh, works very easily. So uh, I, I guess that's kind of the long answer, but I, I've begun to use it in my professional life as well. Yes? As you said, you can use the other components. So uh, when I'm using other components, would it be easy for me just to use another coder to be able to use this program, uh, this uh, plugin? Well, again, for um, for the ASAP Story Engine, the key is that you have to you have to actually have it activated in your theme, um, which is not that difficult. Um, depending on the theme, it may just be the a matter of adding a, a few lines of code. Sometimes the themes have to be tweaked depending on how they're handling, how the content areas are styled and defined, it may not work. But. So if I use one of the themes you recommended and do a, a website and use these elements, would it be uh, yes, better than what I uh, do normally? It, it would give you the ability to do yeah. things that you wouldn't normally be able to do, yes. Okay. Um, but again, you'd have, to, you'd have to actually use one of the themes then that already has the ASAP Story Engine activated or enabled for it. So basically, it gives me more flexibility than a normal theme. Yes. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Other questions? I saw a hand up over here and over here. 
Thanks, Kevin. This has been really great. Um, so I have a situation where I have students that want to tell a story. Mm. Maybe it's an original uh, public domain piece of literature. Mm -hmm. Will the Aesop story engine allow me to tell that based on my own menu? Like, can I insert, let's say, my own menu that t does it by categories or oh, those types of things? It's I kind of a unique saying. project, but I'm just wondering whether or not the Aesop story engine or the themes that you've recommended, rather than sort of telling them a very linear, mm -hmm. will it allow me to put in my own menus and There's sort of click through that way? One of the 13 that I didn't talk about uh, allows you to pull in different stories and have them integrated or linked together within kind of a master overview story. Uh, that might address what you're thinking of. Um, I, I, again, it's, this is one of the components I have not really played with yet. Uh, I think, okay. Um, there's over there and over there and over there. <laughs> Can I use the storytelling as one part of, part of the blog, so one story in, uh, as one blog, uh, blog story. Well, this actually kind of gets to what Shauna's question was. You, you, could have, um, you could have one story that has many pieces to it, uh, where each piece would be a post, uh, and then you would link those together or connect those uh, so that you could progress through it in supposing, different ways. Uh, supposing I'm saying a uh, blog story, can I do it as one post? You can, yes, and that, that's essentially what I did with this demo. It was just a single post that did all of those things. Uh, there were a couple back here. Uh, is it possible to see the, um, the, the site that you use on mobile? Like maybe if you can just shrink the, the viewport so oh, we yes, can see yes. what it looks like? I can grab this here. Yeah. Okay, my confession is I am a Mac user, and I'm not sure on this it's present. To the left of the, uh, of the close button at the very top should minimize it. And then you yeah, yeah. This one? Okay, there we go. Yeah, so you, for example, um, this is what we're looking at right now is a quote box, uh, which is set to be a percentage, uh, and those are of the variables that you set when you insert a quote box using the story engine uh, so that that gets shrunk down so it's you know it still works but it's you know not necessarily the best way to present a quote in, in mobile uh, the photos again you know everything you know everything more or less works uh, and, and I guess I guess what I would say at this point is a lot of this is probably more dependent on the theme uh, that uh, I, I set up to use the, the ASAP story engine than the plugin. Um, so again, if you wanted to style this to, you know, to display things differently, you should be able to do that. I'm wondering if maybe you just need to maybe refresh, or if possible, you have to view it as a mobile view, because if they have something on the server side that is maybe going to load a little bit different a little bit different style of the um, the timeline at the bottom because I'm noticing it's not moving. Okay. The, I'm just if it's maybe it's a, a server side detection of your viewport that well, let's is see what happens. making that work yeah. differently maybe. Yeah. I know at least on the theme level that wasn't the case because I, I'll confess I'm not that fancy when I develop stuff in most cases. <laughs> so. Mm hmm. So. TomorrowSage.com, yeah. Um, I thought I'd put the, the link in here, but maybe I, maybe I didn't. Let me make sure I, I, I have that on the demo page of the... Yeah, it's, so if you go to the slides right here. Um, as a complete side plug, um, uh, I was at WordCamp Milwaukee four or five years ago, um, in the early days of, uh, of managed WordPress hosting, uh, and WP Engine was making a pitch to try and publicize themselves, and they were giving away free hosting for life. Uh, so yeah, th this is actually my free with uh, WP Engine website for life. So I essentially use it whenever I want a sandbox that I can show lots of people. So. Do you want to 
do you know if the engine has ever been used for film programming? I can just see a lot of possibilities there. I like I don't know about film programming. In the as I mentioned, there are about ten pages of resources and links if you download the the presentation um, at the very end, uh, and in there I've linked probably four or five fictional fiction-based sites and four four or five non-fiction sites that use the the plugin. Um, so you can kind of see what people have done, and the diversity is pretty impressive in terms of uh, what people made the sites look like, how they've you know used the functionality in different ways. So uh, I, I'd actually encourage you to do that if you're interested in the plugin. Is go take a look at some of these sites that have been built with it, just to see how many different sorts of things that you can do. Uh, I think I saw one or two other hands around. Or yeah. anybody? Else? Yes. You show that thing uh, for journalists to write. I can't remember what it was. You put it again. Uh, let's see here. This was the first one that was uh, that I talked about. That's mainly for journalists. Uh, the storyteller. Um, and, and on all of these themes, uh, you know, again, if you uh, jump out to the slides, uh, I've got the link to actually download the theme, uh, as well as uh, a link that has uh, either the background information or you know, the, uh, the developer uh, information or whatever is available for a particular theme, uh, as well as if they've got any listing of like showcase examples of sites that have used that theme. So, anything else? I'm going to quick just jump ahead to uh, contact info here in case you do want to follow up. Uh, and once again, that last link on the bottom is where you can download the slides from SlideShare. So thank you very much for, for coming at 3 o'clock in the afternoon.